Today I'm going to fight. Fight to improve my abdominal muscles. I'm going to exercise and let my abdominal muscles shine. How could there be so many old people? In June 2019, the United Nations World Population Prospects stated that population aged over 65 has become the fastest growing group. Currently, the group accounts for about 9% of the world population. It's estimated that by 2050, the number will go up to 16%. That is, one out of every six people will be aged over 65. Population aging has become a global trend, to which China isn't immune. It's estimated that in by 2020, China will have about over 255 million people aged over 60, occupying 17.8% of its total population. Since I got to China, I've tried to sort of observe three things that struck me. One about the elderly here. If you go to the gardens or parks, you will see very active old persons. They are very healthy mm. and also very active. If you meet their needs and you keep them healthy, you keep them active, you keep them able to make use of their knowledge and their skills, they will continue to contribute to, to society. Faced with population aging of an unseen scale, challenges and opportunities also abound. In 2018, China's Alibaba Group was hiring product samplers with a high salary and was looking for people aged over 60 with online shopping experience. With the advent of an aging society, elderly consumption and demand for elderly care are growing. The senior market has become a new blue ocean for upgraded consumption. The elderly are becoming the momentum driving the economy. The current old people, not just increasing in the number, but also they are uh, healthier and also better educated. So they will be more active in the social activities. And I think it's important that government sees the elderly as part and parcel and as valuable members of society and as resources for the continued development of the country. As, as I said, the first thing you want to do is to ensure that you take advantage of the opportunities presented by having a large and growing old population. So you have to reskill and train uh, a lot of people to be able to maximize the benefits. We can see uh, the government has already shifted the lifelong learning from culture activities to educational system to give the more opportunity for the third age universities to provide courses or different programs for the older persons. So we've already investigated what the elderly are doing that can live independently. But what about those elderly that are living in assisted living communities? What are they doing and what are they learning? Let's go see. Ooh, this looks like fun. Can I join? Is it okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Awesome. You're much better at this than I am. Okay, so cool. I got it. All because of online shopping. At my fingertips. Thank you. An old Chinese saying goes, live and learn. Actively responding to population aging, the Chinese government has planned 
to build a policy system and social environment that takes care of, serves for, and respects the elderly. As it moves to combine medical and elderly care and expedite the development of the elderly business and industry. As a key component of the elderly industry, the rise of universities for the elderly is satisfying the diverse needs of the elderly and encouraging the scientific and cultural learning of the entire population, making it a strategic move that actively tackles population aging. Driven by the senior wave, the Healthy China 2030 strategy is including universities for the elderly and encouraging and supporting elderly care organizations such as universities for the elderly. Elderly care service models that combine internationalized universities for the elderly and elderly care communities are also taking shape. Within the next five years, China plans to increase the number of elderly learners from the current 3% to 20% which means at least over 50 million elderly will study at universities for the elderly or educational institutes. In fact, from 1982, uh, China formed the National Committee uh, on Aging, tried to develop the policies and the programs to promote the learning, the social participation, and also the uh, health of the old people. In all of these three decades, we have seen very rapid development. The fact that you now have an integration between welfare and medical care mm -hmm. for the elderly is a step uh, in the right direction. The issue is to what extent are you able to adjust your economy, your social system, your healthcare system, your pension system, your employment regulations and, and markets to cope with the speed of aging. As the process of population aging continues to accelerate, China's elderly care system reform is facing increasingly tougher challenges, such as an, and an imbalanced elderly care system structure. Faced with challenges, China's elderly care service market reform is picking up speed. Since 2019, a dozen of provinces and municipalities, including Beijing, Shanghai, and Jiangsu, have announced the revoking of permits for setting up elderly care institutes. Elderly care institutes are becoming privatized and diverse. Statistics show that up until 2017, China's privately run elderly care institutes account for about 44% of the total number, with households as the basis, supported by communities and supplemented by institutes. An elderly care system combining medical and elderly care is taking shape. What's that, my ears hear? Hark! It be KTV! Rock and roll! What is that? 咱们医养结合呢，就是医疗和养老结合在一起了。我们护士专门上去给老人做一些医疗方面的治疗啊。Okay, well, thank you. Seventeen years ago, the life expectancy was only forty years. Now it's almost eighty years. With the development of longer life expectancy, uh, so now we have more and more older persons, now more than 250 million. We have much better medical services for all ages. And then we have a, a better social security system. Now that we have made so much progress in terms of health improvement, we had a situation where three, four years ago, the primary health care system became neglected. And almost all the resources and emphasis was on tertiary specialized care. And I think we have to rebalance the healthcare system in China. And that is happening already with the Healthy China 2030 strategy. In the near future, China will have more and more elderly. Rural to urban migration is leading to rapid population aging in rural areas. 
The problem of imbalanced regional development and urban and rural inversion is emerging in population aging. Statistics show that by 2030, China's rural and urban areas will see their population aged over 60 reach 21.8% and 14.8% respectively. It is important to build an elderly care service system and improve the rural governance model so as to enforce the rural revitalization strategy. Currently, the Chinese government's policies are leaning towards the rural areas and old age care. The issue of old age care in rural areas has been included in the rural revitalization strategy. Apart from state efforts, old age care in rural areas in China is seeing participation from all sectors of society. In 2018, China has included mutual support old age care in rural areas in its government work report, whereby mutual support is provided in rural areas to offer old age care services. The continuous improvement of its people's life quality to match the speed of population aging is a key task of the Chinese government to ensure the well-being of its people. In 2019, China proposes the Healthy China 2030 strategy, which includes the elderly care system, health care system, and fitness for all. By taking the initiative against population aging, all the elderly will be able to receive care and support and feel happy and secure. I'm in the middle of the time corridor between childhood and old age. I've seen the fulfilling lives of the elderly. How I wish I could live like this when I am old.